Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo está? Bienvenido a Toronto. That's a little different for me, huh? Yeah, that's right. I told you Raul Bravo in East Los Angeles. I'm stealing your intro. That's what I came here to do. Now I got a whole video plan, but I took your intro. So now, let's get into the real video. Camera stada! <laughs> All right, so that was a little different for me, right? And it is a dull, dull day here in, well, not dull, like I'm not poor. It's a dull day in Toronto. Yeah, I had to take the sunglasses off because there's no sun, but my eyes are bothering me. That's why I'm squinting. They're always bothering me. Or is it a James Dean thing? I don't know. Anyways, that intro was for Raul and his brother Daniel over in East Los Angeles, buds of mine. Check out their channel, I'm gonna give you a link to it. Raul, I'm not stealing your intro, but I told you I would. Because I love their videos, man. You guys got to watch their videos. I'm going to give you a link to them. And uh, to Jardis in Sanatorium out of Montreal. I'm going to give a link to their page as well. Or channel. You know what I mean. Check it out. I'm going to be spending a lot of time with uh, Raul and Daniel when I'm back in Los Angeles, which is very, very soon. And also a shout out to Apple Juice in Manchester, UK. You wanted a shout out? There you go, you used to live in Toronto. Do you ever come to this area? You know where I am? I'm in the most expensive area of Toronto. Probably in Canada, I, I believe. This is called the Bridal Path. And you know who lived here? Okay, yeah, I don't walk, I drive. Prince, Drake, Gordon Lightfoot, if you know who he is. Conrad Black, a lot of people. Right now, I'm gonna show you where Prince used to live. Yeah, Prince, the purple one, His Majesty, right here, Prince's house. So this house right here, this was owned by Prince and his wife, Manuela, who is from Toronto. Prince lived here from about 2001 to 2006, same time when he made Musicology, one of his best albums. Yeah, this house, it's called a bungalow. It's a bungalow that's for sale for 17 million right now. Most bungalows are at 17 million. Now it's hard to see most of the house. So I'm gonna to try to show you what I can. And it's not, in, it's not invasive, I don't think, because everybody who lives in Toronto knows where Prince used to live. And knows that this is this former house. Take a look at it. This is what I said, it's called the Bridal Path. It's one of the most expensive areas in Canada, if not the most expensive. The houses here are crazy insane. This looks like not a lot of property. It's two acres. There's two kitchens right in that front window there. You see where that dome is? That's the front entranceway. And off to the left, there's like a purple statue in the front window that you can see lit up at night. But I'm here during the day, so you can't see lit up. And that statue is still there from the days of Prince. Now, Toronto is a huge city, but it's actually a small town. Like we've got so many people here and it sprawls and sprawls and sprawls. It's, I think it's like the fourth biggest, third biggest city in North America. Chicago, I think overtook us. Well, I love Chicago, so I should do it. But yeah, everybody kind of knows somebody who knows someone who knows someone. So I, I've had people, I know people who have had encounters with Prince back when he was alive and living in Toronto, obviously. And his ex-wife, Manuela, who grew up in Toronto. She's a Toronto girl. Her dream was to marry Prince. She had pictures of him all in her locker. And she ended up marrying Prince fairy tale. Now the house behind me, let's get a look at those gates again. The house is on sale now for $17 million, as I said, and it's got two kitchens and a salon to do your hair, to get your hair did. Because if you're Prince, you need a salon. Don't look at me. Don't look at me, motorcycle driver. I will, I will chase you on foot. I like to get loud. Oh, look. A couple of Home Depot bags. So, yeah, it's. What are you. How many people looking at me? Yo, I'll come after you like Daniel in Los Angeles. What are you looking at me for? Anyways, he'll get that joke. So, this house has an uh, outdoor pool and a kitchen attached to the cabana, which is kind of surrounding the pool. Yeah, and tennis courts. Take a look on Google Maps, you can find it. So to give you a little bit of perspective, remember the video I did on Corey Haim a couple days ago? That's about 
eight kilometers from here, down one street, a main street in Toronto. And it's so close. It's like a five minute drive for me, not even to go back and forth. So that shows the area, like this area of Toronto, which is the most expensive area, like I said, huge houses, is kind of in North Toronto and dead center of North Toronto. And my friends and I used to drive through, uh, through here in high school all the time, all the time. Look at that house, look at that house. I'd like to live there, would you like to live there? I'd love to live there. You know, what teenage boys do? You go and look at houses. Anyways, and then we, there's a creepy house over here, but it's gone now. And we used to go inside and, you know, run around. We used to videotape it. Where are those videos now? You tell me, I don't know. But yeah, so I know this area pretty well. And there used to not be any sidewalks. And now there are. Because they didn't want people traipsing around, walking around, looking at the houses. Oh well. So now what we're gonna do now, what I'm gonna do now, is besides fall down these steps, I'm gonna take you to Drake's house. Drake lives three blocks over, small blocks, but big properties. And I gotta drive by first, see about uh, parking around the, his place because it's a little difficult. Maybe just do a drive by. But we're gonna see Drake's house right now coming up. All right, let's go. You coming? I just gotta walk to my car, so just keep me company while I walk to my car. It's right there. Cab driver. You're living on this street and you're calling a cab? I need to have a driver. Sucks. All right, let's go. All right, I just did a drive by at Drake's place and there's nowhere to park around it. So I'm gonna drive by and show you it a couple times. And security guard always out front no matter what. Always, 24 hours a day, security guard out front. But I don't care. I'm gonna stop and talk about it. Because in my city, and you don't tell me when I can stop. Well, the police can, but private security, you can't tell me I can't stop on the street. I'll stop if I want to stop. And it's not invasive because everybody in Toronto knows where Drake's house is. It's all over. He promotes it too. Love Drake. He's such a great ambassador for the city. He, love, he, gave, he gave us the nickname, The Six, because we have two area codes. Now we have three, I believe. But 416, 647, so it's called The Six. And I think, I think we have a new one, 437. 437? I don't know. I, I don't text people that have a 437. It's too much. Stick to the six. I can't keep track of my area codes, people. Anyway, so now we're going to drive by Drake's place. And like I said, I do like Drake. And I love Prince. Like, I love Prince. Look at it. Like, really love Prince. One of the greatest musicians of all time. Do I have to say that? You know that. Look at this little school behind me, though. Private school. This is a really ritzy area. And this used to be an empty lot that was empty for like years. Popularly known as a makeout spot. Come down this hill and then right around the corner here is an extension of my university where I went to, the French campus. It's right around here. This little bend. But you're going through that entrance now. I don't know, you used to go through that entrance. That's, that's a bridge. goes over the valley and the cars and that's a new condo am I really bad at narrating oh did I mention the bridge I'm gonna do a little drive by of Drake's house on both sides and you're gonna get a look at it and see how big it is and I'll tell you a little bit about it. I'm gonna to have to insert some pictures of it. It's gonna be hard to see, but oh, you can already see the security guard up here, always out front. It, there's a big black gate in front of Drake's house that I thought they'd take down when it's finished. I believe it's finished. He bought the property for 6.7 million, something like that, and then tore the house down and built a new house. And the house is beyond huge. It's a different level of huge. Think of something huge. Okay, times it by 10. Here it is right here, right there. That would be Drake's house, right there. Can't even see it. I'm gonna give you a better angle, don't worry. 
Squirrel, do not cross the street. Thank you. All right, we're about to come up on Drake's house yet again. Up here on the left, I would love it if I could stop, but this street is just a little too busy. And they put speed bumps, which really annoys me. The squirrel made it out okay, by the way. So, Drake's house is huge. It has an indoor NBA-sized basketball court. Did I stutter? No. An indoor NBA-sized basketball court. And a room just for his jerseys and trophies. And a massage room. What's your massage room like? Mine's pretty small. I imagine Drake's is pretty big. Brain dead. I drops. Da 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 da. Ba 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 ba. Da da. Get fed. Take a look at these houses. People were so mad when they were built here, because they're so weird looking. Just off the main street, I was telling you about. People were so mad. I think they're really great, really original. And I believe they're from the future, and I think, I believe E.T. lives in there. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sorry, Drake fans became here specifically just to see Drake's house, and you thought you could, shut up, bus. And you could, and you wanted to see more. But I gave you the inserts, right? That's something special, which you could have probably found yourself. But still, and I just watched the footage back quickly, which I never do. I always watch footage back when I get home or to the hotel, wherever I am. Make sure, you know, whatever, that's okay and all that. I just realized it's a little bumpy and there's sounds, but that's, a, you know, that happens when you record. I don't know what's going on in my car. There's lots of uh, knickknacks on the front seat that I should have cleared away. Now, do you want to go see the most expensive home in Toronto, which I thought was the most expensive home in Canada, but that's somewhere in Vancouver. Uh, much love, Vancouver. Go Leafs. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna take you to the most expensive house in Canada right now. And I don't think I can stop in front of it because once again, it's on a very, very, very busy road. Shut up, car. And uh, so I'll we'll probably just do another drive by quickly. But then I got something special at the end to tell you. What? All right, I removed the stuff that's jingling from my mirror. Coming up right here is the most expensive home in Canada. Let's get a closer look. Uh, it's right here. You can't see it at all. Right there, those are the gates to the most expensive home in Canada, 35 million. And look, it's for sale. So what I'm thinking is, if I have 3,000 subscribers, if we're all to put in 100 bucks each, that's like $300 million. We could buy that house and have so much more, more money left over, right? Yeah, I just did the math quickly in my head. That, that works out. So let's all think about it. We could all live there. 3,000 of us. Let's do this. There's a very famous house down that street. But that's for another video another time yeah so as i was saying earlier down one of those streets there's a really famous house and just over there that way is another famous house both from movies very popular movies and now oh, i just thought of another house that's from a movie that's around here but i'll save those for another day i'm gonna make videos about those separately but i'm leaving toronto very very soon time is minimalizing and I'm going back to the States for a long time to do a lot of videos so how many more have I got coming from Toronto that I'm gonna do I don't know I'll see what I can do before I leave but I got more coming it's a very loud street I almost gave the finger to it I like to give the finger to inanimate inanimate, inanimate objects just because it's you know well, it's nicer than doing it to an actual person. Anyways, so you're gonna see a couple more videos from Toronto, I believe. And then I'm headed west for a while. So now I'm gonna say peace. Out. And I was at the CNE, the Canadian National Exhibition, the other day. So right now at the end here, I did, did filmed a little bit just to show uh, 
subscribers what the Canadian National Exhibition is all about. I went to see a concert from a couple of 90s bands live and Counting Crows, who I love. So, I mean, uh, I didn't really record the, the bands playing. I just sat back and enjoyed it. But I'll show you what the scene is like. Rides, food, people, smells, all of it. Scratch and sniff. You can smell the C and E too. It's famous for it. The smell. All right. Why is that man looking at me pulling up his pants? What just happened in that car? Dude, don't creep me out. Look at him. He's still doing it. All right. <sighs> Welcome to Toronto. Oh, and just a little postscript to the man that was pulling up his pants, the old elderly gentleman as he got out of the car. He lit a cigarette. It's broad daylight. What was he doing in that car with that woman? Senior citizens. God love them. I'm impressed, dude. Good for you. And uh, for the exhibition stuff that I'm going to show you right now, I'm just going to put some music over it. And you can just uh, see a quick little glimpse of what the scene is like. No big... Uh, uh, I was talking to my friends and stuff. Then we did a little bit on camera. And then got distracted by going to the concert because we were getting late and had to get in there. So, yeah. But at least you can see what Toronto has to offer because Toronto is awesome. But I can't wait to get back to the States.